Minister, I call on Neil Bibby to wind up the debate, and you have until 11.40. Thank you, President Officer. Like um, other members who have spoken in the debate today, I would like to start by paying tribute to the family members, mostly grandparents, who are caring for thousands of children in Scotland. When parents find difficulty in caring for children for whatever reason, family members often step in to provide a stable, loving home for children. As a nation, we owe them a debt of gratitude. This has been a wide-ranging and robust debate, and members have rightly raised concerns about the lack of support for children in kinship care. Despite some progress being made, Scottish Labour brought forward this debate today because of those concerns and because the Scottish Parliament and Government owe it to the children being looked after by a family member the same financial support as those in foster care. We had a consensus in this chamber on the last debate we had on looked after children. It was a constructive and positive debate about how we must help some of the most vulnerable children in society. In the space of two weeks, we have gone from unity on how we look after some of the most vulnerable children to where we are now debating why we are not doing enough for children in kinship care. I know the ministers and the SNP backbenchers have continually tried to bring this debate back to what the UK government have or have not done, but Labour's motion today was about specific commitment and promise made by the SNP that they simply have not delivered on. It is simply not good enough for the SNP to pass the buck and blame, blame Westminster, blame local authorities, particularly when the poor to help kinship carers lies here in the Scottish Parliament, and particularly when um, they sold kinship carers out in 2009, and, 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 and a letter from Isabel Hutton, SNP Council, reiterated this when she said, in return to the council, uh, Council's agreement to this specific uh, enhanced commitment to reduce class sizes, that, that was the occasion on which kinship carers were sold out. Um, and in terms of, in terms of the, the ministers making those points and passing the buck and playing the blame game, uh, the Minister for Children and Young People said she was attending a kinship care conference on Monday and perhaps she would like to pass the buck and, uh, and play a blame game at that uh, conference and see what sort of response she gets from the kinship carers that this government has simply let down. The reason, why, the reason why we raise these concerns is because many of these children will be cared for by grandparents and will have experienced many difficulties in their short lives. According to the charity Who Cares, 24 per cent will have lived with abuse, neglect and violence and will have deserted by their parents, often because of drug or alcohol abuse, and 10 per cent after the death of a parent, often because, again, of substance abuse. The, the, the Association of Directors of Social Work, ADSW, suggests that the number of children requiring care is increasing and has increased in every year since uh, 2001 due to parental substance abuse. And who provides that solution, and it is the army of, uh, forgotten army of grandparents and other family members who um, look after and step in to uh, help those most vulnerable members of their family. Um, we know there are a number of advantages, and a number of members have said this this morning, um, of family or kinship care. Members have pointed out children live with people they know, love and trust in a more stable environment. They may, stay, they may even stay in touch with their parents where appropriate. This can, this can mean they stay at the same school and feel less stigmatised. Yes, they can intervene. Sandra White. Yeah. Can I ask the, the member who agrees with me that kinship carers ought to be entitled to child benefit and child tax credit, regardless of any allowances they receive? Neil Bibby. Um, do, do you have concerns about the, the, the welfare um, reforms being made by, by the Conservative-led government at Westminster? But that our motion today is about the specific promise that was given by the SNP 2007 that has not uh, been delivered, and that is what we are discussing here today. Um, we, know that, we know the benefits from kinship care, and we also know the, the important factors to a child's emotional and physical well-being, building their resilience, aiding their educational achievement and helping them to make their contribution to society. These children, thousands of children in Scotland, have been cared for by members of their families. Thousands of children for whom local authorities do not need to find suitable homes. Thousands of children whose life chances are likely to be better than if they were cared for by the state, and I know a number of members have made that point. Thousands of children whose family members have changed their own lives and plans to ensure that their grandchild, nephew, niece or relation has a better life. 
While no one can put a financial cost on the love and attention given by families, the Demos organisation reports that children in stable care situations cost society an average of £32,000 less per year than children in less stable placements or who shuttle between parental and foster care. There can be few better examples of preventative spend than to support these families. I was well, grateful to the member for taking the intervention. I just wonder if he will uh, elaborate on the point raised by my colleague Derek Mackay, in which he uh, voted as a councillor in Renfrewshire, voted against the kinship carer payments, and why the parents, the kinship carers in Renfrewshire, aren't worthy of that additional support. Neil Bibby. I can't say I supported um, every one of Derek Mackay's uh, budgets that cut around nearly £400 million pounds from services in Renfrewshire. Um, and the way there was a few other budget lines that I, 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 in, 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 in lots of areas that I won't necessarily go into uh, today, um, but I'd be ha happy to do on another occasion why I didn't support Mr Mackay's budgets. Um, so the, the, the concerns have been um, re rightly raised by many members um, about the variation in different local authorities, and this is undeniable. Many members have said it here today, the ADSLB have said it, the children's charities have said it, and it's been backed up by evidence we've heard at the Education um, Committee last week. Uh, the Scottish Poverty Truth Commission, supported by the Church of Scotland in looking at kinship care, also calls for an end uh, to discrimination based on legal status or postcode of the kinship carer, and that all, po uh, all policies are centred on the needs of the child, not the carer. They also make a number of very important recommendations that we must look at um, in more detail and call for payments to equal that of foster care. In bringing forward this debate, Labour members have asked the Scottish Government what they are doing for children in kinship care. We know the First Minister did commit on the 27th of September 2007 to bring forward £10 million to fund financial support equivalent to that paid to foster parents. Further commitments have been made by successive SNP ministers that this promise would be met via the Concordat and with local government by 2011 at the latest, and yet this is not, still not happening. And we heard the, the, the Minister for Children and Young People this morning um, say a lot of words about um, supporting children. I, I wasn't sure um, during the uh, contribution whether um, the, the Minister has indeed dropped that commitment today and is actually not promising to deliver that, uh, that promise that our predecessors had promised would be delivered. And, um, uh, we would, I would welcome. Um, well, it's clear then that, that, that the policy has been dropped, presiding officer. Um, it's the, it's the church. Elaine Campbell. Ensure that kinship carers are given the support that they need, but of course, kinship carers want additional support. They want guidance. They need help. They need signposts of the, the benefits that are available to them. And we'll also be making a robust case to the UK government to ensure that the welfare system it properly helps kinship carers in Scotland. Neil Bibby. I know, I know we're still not getting a commitment there from the, SM, the SNP government, and, and, and to say that we need more time, the SNP government have had five years to deliver on this commitment. And we've heard uh, Minister Derek Mackay talking about, you know, a couple of years and we'll have an independence referendum. Yeah. Uh, we've got to wait another three years. Well, in actual fact, this could be sorted out in three months if you put it in your budget. It's the Church of Scotland um, in their correspondence with this week who have suggested that budget decisions are moral decisions, promising aid to those kinship carers in 2007, often elderly, often, often sacrificing um, to help children and who are not looking for massive sums but simply a quality of treatment and then not delivering on that promise. What does that say about this SNP Scottish Government? In London this week, the First Minister stated that Scotland was a progressive beacon to the rest of the UK. Uh. On this issue, that is clearly not the case, no. where kinship carers, often grandparents, looking after our most vulnerable children with love and devotion, have their hopes raised by an SNP government which has not delivered on its promises. I want to share a statement I heard with the Chamber I heard recently, and it is something I think we should listen to. That discrimination should have no place in Scotland in 2012. There is a responsibility on politicians to tackle the issue, to recognise the injustices, and I hope to start to sort them out. And by no means suggesting that you have a magic wand. Nevertheless, the starting point is December 2007, when the Parliament agreed an approach and the local authorities signed up to it. Does that mean anything? It certainly never materialised. In fact, the discrimination in the postcode lottery are more entrenched. I hope that you can recognise that and give justice to these kids. These are not my words, but the words of Tommy McFall, a grandfather who gave evidence at the Education Committee on Kinship Care just last week. Presiding officer. 
Children need kinship carers. Society needs kinship carers. Carers need to be properly supported and to be treated with respect, equality and justice. That is why Labour is calling on the Scottish Government to do the right thing, to heed what kinship carers, the Poverty Truth Commission and the churches are calling for, equal support for care of equal value. Ministers can and should act to end an injustice. If members want to support kinship carers and the thousands of children they look after, then they should support the motion in Jackie Bailey's name.